Hey guys, Vladimir here and today I've got one of those projects that really show how useful it can be having a 3D printer at home. So here is my dilemma. I bought this um, spray booth here and the way this works, it has an exhaust fan on the back that you then attach this hose to which will exhaust out the window with that fitting there that it came with. So what I did was I kind of pulled out the old window and just constructed this frame with the opening for the fitting here and I, when I'm ready to use it, I just attach this and I'm good to go. So let me just show you what I mean really quick. So there it is, attached, ready to go. I can go ahead and do my spray painting. And the problem I have is I don't want to leave it like this, right? Because where I live, it gets pretty cold out and I don't want all that air, uh, cold air getting into the house. So I wanted a quick way to be able to just cap this off when I'm done. So the approach I took was that I uh, used Fusion to model this cap. And I modeled it so that it has threads that match the threads to the fitting there. So when I'm done, I can just thread this on there and cap off the, um, the opening. Um, now Fusion has a way that you can go in and just choose if you know the thread profiles you want to use. You can just go ahead and select it and model your threads that way. In this case, I don't know uh, what the thread profile is for this or if there even is one. Um, so the approach I took was to use the coil feature uh, to make my own custom thread. So I just took some measurements um, from that fitting and applied it to my, um, my model. So um, let me go ahead and show you how I attach this. So after removing the hose, I've got the opening there. All I do then is I take um, take my cap and I ended up cutting just a little bit of foam to use as insulation um, which I'll just pop in there and I cut another little piece to go on here and then all I simply do is just thread this on and I'm good to go. So there you have it, and that's a quick fix, and that's exactly what I was looking for. Um, I, all I have to do is thread that in, and my basement now can stay warm. So let me go ahead and jump into Fusion, and I'll show you exactly how I tackle this. I'm going to begin by creating a sketch on the XY plane. And what I did was I measured the outer diameter of the fitting where the hose is going to connect to. I'm going to model the threaded cap to fit around this piece. As you can see, I have a diameter here of 108 millimeters. After a few trial and error, I found that designing my cap at 110 millimeters gave me a nice fit. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just go ahead and click C for circle, create a circle, give it a diameter of 110 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and click stop sketch and we'll go ahead and extrude this uh, get the orientation right. We'll extrude this to 40 millimeters. And this is going to be sort of the um, just the outside of the cap here that's going to be threaded in. Um, next, I'm going to uh, go ahead and shell this out. So we'll go ahead and choose modify shell. I'll click the top here. And I'm going to want outside for direction and I'm just going to give it a two millimeter shell. And here's a trick I actually didn't learn until um, using Fusion for a while. Uh, if you want to shell any additional parts, for example, I don't want the bottom here. All I have to do is hit control or command on a Mac and choose that bottom part and that'll get rid of that as well. Okay, now that we have sort of our, our outer part, we're, let's go ahead and put the, uh, the threads in. So to do that, I'm going to uh, create a coil. So I'm going to go to Create, Coil, and I'll choose that same plane. And we'll go ahead and give this the same diameter of 110 millimeters. Now it looks a little funky right now, but we'll take care of that. So let's look at the dialog box here. Um, after choosing your plane, um, it, the first thing you're, it's going to ask you for is how do you want to define this and you have a few options here. I'm going to go with a revolution and height. So we'll do that because those are the numbers 
I know um, that I have. Um, so we'll go ahead and as far as diameter I've already set that. I'm going to choose three revolutions. Uh, it's just what I felt was good for this application. You know, you can change it to serve uh, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, for height, I'm going to go ahead and choose 39. And I'll explain that. Um, so what I did is I measured the distance between um, the two revolutions, as you can see here. And that gave me a measurement of 26. So with that distance of 26, I figured out that I've got uh, 13 millimeters as distance between revolutions. So I want three revolutions. So all I did was I took uh, 13 times 3, and that gives me a height of 39. Angle is going to stay at zero. Section, I have a few choices here. Um, I can choose um, circle, a triangle. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and finish the rest of this. That way when I select these you'll see what's going on so um, I'm gonna choose we'll come back to this I'm gonna choose section size of 6.5 and from cut I'm gonna go to new body okay now we have something um, visual and what I'm going to do is expand um, bodies here and just uncheck this so I can just see the coil right now okay so we left off at we did high uh, angle was going to stay at zero so I was showing you the different sections so you can see all, all this does is we can go uh, a s circular coil square coil and then we have the option of going um, external uh, triangle or internal and that's just where you want you know um, sort of the pointy edge of the um, triangle uh, either internal or if I choose external it'll just um, uh, switch to the outside uh, external but in this case I want internal um, because I want the threads to be uh, on the inside so let's let's change that back okay so the section side oh we skipped center so we'll just say I'm, I'm just gonna pick center here but I do have the option of modeling this um, you know on the outside or inside um, section size basically you just play with it um, you know this was sort of trial and error you can see if I increase this you know that size of that triangle is going to get bigger or I can bring it down um, I found that 6.5 worked for this application um, so everything else looks good I'm going to keep it to well there is nothing else I went through everything um, but I'm going to keep it as new body and click OK so we can see we have our two bodies now, our um, coil and that sort of outer outer part, of that, that cylinder that we created. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and I want to extrude this cylinder to go up past the coil. Um, but look what happens when I do this. So if I hit uh, E and then select this, um, just Keep an eye here, I have body one and body two. All I want to do is just go up so that it goes past the coil and then click OK. You see that actually did a Boolean operation for me. I didn't have to combine them. And the reason is because I had this set to join instead of new body. And because it's set to join and that's actually um, crossing a different body, it will automatically combine it. So, OK, next thing I want to do is... I want to get rid of the outside of this um, and just keep sort of the threads on the inside. So what I'm going to do is just I'll create a sketch on the top of this surface here. And I'm just going to make a circle bigger than my existing uh, cylinder here and stop sketch. And I'm just going to choose just that outer uh, profile, hit E for extrude, and I'm just going to bring that all the way down to cut. So that gives me a clean cut on the outside and I have my thread on the inside and I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and uh, give this a bottom. So what I'll do is, let's see, how should I tackle this? All right, I'll just create a sketch here. Um, I'll select this profile here and I'll create another circle. I'll just go a little bit bigger. Um, one. 30 sounds good and 
I'm gonna I want to select the whole thing to extrude it out so you have to be careful here because the thread in there or the coil does sort of a funky shape so to make sure we select everything I'm gonna uncheck bodies um, and then go in and select both of these profiles okay so that looks good now I can bring bodies back let me come down I'm gonna say five millimeters and change this from a cut to a join and click OK. Okay, now I'm going to just go ahead and put a little fillet here. Uh, 10 looks good. And that looks pretty good. One thing I wish I had done on the last one I printed was uh, it would have been nice to have sort of like little finger holes in here to get a nice grip while I'm turning. Um, so yeah, why don't we just go ahead and do that? It, it'll be pretty simple. So I'll just go ahead and create a sketch on this this profile here. I'm just going to drop a circle in here. Um, let's say maybe 15 or maybe 20. 20 for a diameter looks good. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit um, to overlap my circle. And why don't we just align it with the middle there with our center. So I'm going to grab our horizontal vertical constraint, click on the circle, and then choose my origin here. And that'll go ahead and constrain it so I can move it up and down, but not side to side. Um, so I'm just going to get this about right here. looks good. Um, stop sketch, and I'll just go ahead oops, select this profile. Oops, hit E for extrude, select the profile, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the way up. All right, sorry, let me get this right. All right, so that looks good. I'll click OK as a cut, and I'm going to hit F for fillet and just do a little fillet on these edges here. Uh, that looks good. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create a circular pattern of that. So we'll go ahead and choose Create. Um, pattern, circular pattern, and I'm going to choose uh, features. Yeah, features as a pattern type. And as far as objects, I'm going to select the right from my timeline. So I'm going to choose the fillet and the extrusion in my axes. Um, I want this blue axis here. If you're having a hard time selecting it, just uncheck the bodies and then choose it and then bring your body back and now I can just go ahead and tell it how many I want so I can just increase this arrow here and you'll see it'll put a check mark in each location that it's going to go ahead and make that feature um, 10 looks good I'm going to click OK and yeah that looks a lot better that will give me a nice little uh, grip to be able to turn that so okay um, last thing I'm going to do is on these uh, triangles because of um, the nature of, of how um, the fitting is it, it, it's more rounded than it is um, this triangle shape so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a fillet on this just to have it match a little better so I'm gonna do a fillet of two millimeters and I'm just going to do one final fillet here just to kind of smooth this out to give it a nice transition. So I'll choose a fillet of one millimeter there. And that's it. There's our threaded cap. After printing my original threaded cap, I wasn't able to get it to thread. And I realized that the problem was that I modeled the threads going the opposite way of what they needed to be. Um, so if you take a look at my coil here um, and the direction it's going, I need to reverse that and make it go the other way. Um, so that's an easy fix. All I have to do is just come down to my timeline, uh, go ahead and activate my coil feature here by just double clicking. And there's this rotation button here. Now if you take a look at the direction of it, I can go in and press the rotation button and it's going to flip it to go the other way. So you can just toggle this back and forth um, to get the direction you need and then just click OK.
and that was all I needed to do. Once I did that, reprinted it, it was able to thread fine. Um, so just be conscious of the direction you need to go when you're creating your coil um, so that it'll work in the end. Now, I don't want to leave you with the impression that I did this all in one try. So, <sighs> here are all the prototypes. So, if you enjoyed this, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're looking to learn how to design for 3D printing using Fusion 360, check out my course below. I'm going to put a link uh, that will take you to my online course. Alright guys, take care.